Hello and a warm welcome to our special report. On the show this week, we talk to you about the controversial abortion law, which is also known as a medical termination of Pregnancy Amendment Bill 2014. The draft of this abortion law made its way on the Health Ministry website and after inviting suggestions, the entire bureaucracy and the government are tight-lipped whether to allow the nurses or the midwives to conduct abortion. Over the next 30 minutes, we dissect the legislation and find out its feasibility in the context of the Indian health scenario. This piece of legislation has become the centre point of controversy amongst the health activists and the allopath doctors. New draft of the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Amendment Bill 2014 wants to allow nurses, midwives, practitioners of Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha and homeopathic medicine to perform abortions using both medical and surgical methods. This means medics with little or no training in modern surgical practice will be performing operations that could involve life-endangering situations. Many in the medical fraternity are alarmed by this move. There is no denial that surgery started with Ayurved. There is no denial Ayurved has BA, MS, Bachelor of Ayurvedic Medicine and Surgery. But there is no teaching of surgery there. They don't have Ayurvedic anesthesia. There is no Ayurvedic antibiotics. There is no Ayurvedic uh, local anesthesia. Or, uh, there are no, no Ayurvedic ICUs. So at the moment, I don't think so. This is the right step. This is a retrograde step. Section 3 of the Principal Act replaces the term registered medical practitioners with the word registered health care providers, widening the ambit of the health service, but at the same time raising questions on the safety of the women's reproductive health. MTP done in experienced hands also by gynecologists who are in practice for so many years. Even we take such precautions and uh, we have seen so many complications being handled uh, since we are uh, aware about it, since we are taught about it, we are handling it at the right time. So a lot of morbidity and mortality is being saved. So I definitely think that this is not going to help the women in any way. India has an embarrassing maternal mortality record. Every two hours, a woman dies in an abortion performed unsafely or unscientifically. Medical infrastructure is poor and sanitization of operation rooms at government and mid-sized private hospitals treacherous. Conditions are worse in rural areas. At the recently botched up sterilizations at Bilaspur, Chhattisgarh, a dozen women died after undergoing tubectomies at a free sterilization camp. One of those performing at the camp organized by the state government was an award-winning surgeon. Doctors say if operations can go wrong with qualified doctors, how can one compromise the safety of the health with the Ayurveda acharyas, homeopaths, midwives who are not trained to handle abortions? The Bilaspur incidents we are not with the doctor, we are not with any doctor, the Indian Medical Association is not with any doctor who works on targets which are unrealistic, if that has happened. We have, we have, we have a document to show where uh, targets are given to doctors, you have to do so many surgeries in a day. Please do not compromise. My message to every doctor in the country is, please do not compromise with the patient safety and quality, even if your seniors forces you. The activists have demanded the withdrawal of the MTP Amendment Bill 2014 mainly on the ground that the theoretical foundations of the Ayurveda, homeopathy and MBBS students are completely at variance. The first complication complication is that it is incomplete. The people who are doing it, sometimes they don't get out of the product. They think that it's done, but some products are left, which we call incomplete abortion. If incomplete abortion is incomplete, then it is septic. मतलब इन्फेक्शन क्रिएट कर सकता है जिससे महिला की मौत तक भी हो सकती है तीसरा कॉम्प्लिकेशन होता है परफोरेशन यूट्रस में परफोरेट कर देती हैं क्योंकि जो इंस्ट्रूमेंट होते हैं उनको यूट्रस की लेंथ ही नहीं पता होती है वो क्या करते हैं कि उसको परफोरेट कर देते हैं उसमें मतलब होल बन जाता है चौथा कॉम्प्लिकेशन है कि प्रोडक्ट की जगह पर इंटेस्टाइन वगैरह भी खींच के वो बाहर ला सकते हैं तो इंटेस्टिनल परफोरेशन भी हो सकता है महिला की मृत्यु तक भी हो जाती है तो पेशेंट के लिए बहुत हद तक ये सब कॉम्प्लिकेशन खतरनाक साबित हो सकते हैं अगर उसकी पूरी तरीके से ट्रेनिंग ना हो तो 
Those in favor of the proposal cite the World Health Organization's safe abortion guidelines, which say that training and enabling midwives to perform safe abortions will benefit large numbers of people in remote parts of the country. Nearly 50% of abortions are performed at home or by untrained practitioners. Over 5,800 women die each year due to unsafe abortions. This amendment will in fact bring back-of-the-street practitioners into the legal fold, train them and help monitor their services. Let's take a look at what triggered this amendment in the abortion law. Population Council for the first time conducted researches in Jharkhand and Bihar to study the feasibility, safety, effectiveness and acceptability of training nurses and Ayurveda charyas for carrying out safe abortions. Positive and encouraging findings from the two studies were provided to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and the research and programme communities, helping to alleviate concerns about amending the MTP Act and widen support for provider expansion in India. Abortion by a trained Ayurved provider or a trained uh, nurse uh, this, who undergoes the same kind of training that an MBBS doctor does will provide safe abortion. There is Indian research, there is global research in countries like South Africa, Vietnam and US and also the fact that more than 17 countries currently non-MBBS doctors are safely providing abortion services. So it's pretty well established. But allopaths have raised questions on the practicality and the short-sightedness of the Population Council survey. You are degrading Ayurveda by telling them to practice allopathy. We respect Ayurved. Ayurved has a lot of scope to go further. They should do their own research and, and, and we are looking for their research. They should inculcate yoga, prevention, everything there. If they are going to be given uh, 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 training and allopathy, they will be neither Ayurved nor an allopath. They will be half-cooked doctors. If they want to give, then they should give to MBBS doctors who are trained four and a half years with the anatomy and the other complications part and they should be trained the government should improve their rural PHC centers where they have a better facilities for abortion. Worldwide, an estimated 22 million unsafe abortions are performed each year. This is a result of a range of factors including the legal status and the social stigma of abortion and a lack of access to safe abortion services. In India, where abortion has been legalized since 1971, shortages of equipped facilities and trained providers, particularly in rural areas, force many women to undergo unsafe procedures. This has contributed to high maternal mortality rates throughout the country where rates of maternal deaths attributed to complications from unsafe abortions are as high as 8%. Today, in most places where poor women live, you don't have a provider who can provide safe abortion. It is estimated that there are 6 million to 7 million abortions happening in the country every year, out of which almost 50% are unsafe. Now, who provides these abortions? They are basically the Ayurvedas, the nurses. Today, because the law does not allow them to be trained, they provide it without training, they provide it secretly. With this law, what would happen is agencies and the government can start training the very providers who currently are providing illegal abortion. So what it would essentially do is A, make abortion available where the poor woman lives. Allopaths fear that the amendment could lead to a spike in female feticide, encourage abortion and discourage contraception. The draft bill also goes against the two rulings of the Supreme Court which strictly prohibit cross-pathy practice. In the Poonam Varma versus Ashwin Patel judgment, the court observed a person who does not have knowledge of a particular system of medicine but practices in that system is a quack and a mere pretender to medical knowledge or skill or to put it differently, a charlatan. And the Dr. Muktiar Chand versus State of Punjab judgment checks non-allopaths from prescribing the allopathic drugs. We are not sure of the exact wording of the text. But don't forget that even allopathic doctors can't carry out uh, MTPs, medical termination of pregnancy, just like that. For homeopathic doctors and Ayurvedic doctors, they need to be trained. Qualifications is an issue. And they need to be trained probably in medical colleges, not just this, you know, some rotten, you know, you go to some place and you get some diploma for training, you know. 
That kind of thing should not be allowed. This draft abortion law talks about another amendment and that is raising the ceiling of the abortion from 20 to 24 weeks of pregnancy. This amendment is more acceptable, it's called progressive and there's a larger consensus on this. The doctors even say that the health ministry should promote and emphasize on contraceptive methods to prevent unwanted pregnancies and not medical termination, which means the focus of the family planning program has to be contraception and permanent methods of sterilization after completing the family. Experts also feel that abortion should be done only by a registered medical practitioner as this amendment will encourage sex-selective abortions in the country. It will also reverse the efforts made so far to improve the child sex ratio, at the same time putting the life of a woman at risk due to repeated pregnancies and deliveries. We do have a shortage of health uh, workers and uh, I think it would be a good idea if we could train them and we could send them to the peripheries where, you know, if they can, uh, you know, uh, spread the knowledge and a First of all, I would, I'm not uh, say for abortions per se, because I always feel that, you know, we should be uh, emphasizing on contraceptions better and we should be advocating that better. But said that, having said that, if the woman has to undergo an abortion and she is not able to reach a health facility and these people are trained enough to give them that facility without endangering their life, definitely. Let's take a short break at this point in time, but when we come back, we talk to the Ayurveda and the homeopath doctors as to how ready they are if at all this legislation sails through. Welcome back. You're watching our special report, The Abortion Law Conundrum. Allopathic doctors are not alone in their opposition to this particular amendment proposed in the draft abortion bill. Many prominent homeopathy and Ayurveda doctors themselves object to the idea of being given a free reign to terminate pregnancies for women. Prominent among them is the Indian Homeopathic Medical Association, an organization representing homeopaths across the country. Allowing Ayurveda and homeopaths, I've spoken to a couple of Ayurvedic, uh, the Homeopathic uh, Association of India yesterday, they are also against it. Uh, I don't think so, this is the right step the government is planning. IMA is opposing it, IMA will oppose it and will keep on opposing it. IMA has also spoken to the gynecological associations. They also feel that giving Ayurvedic doctors to do surgery will be a retrograde step in the community because as on today, they have no training and there are no Ayurvedic antibiotics, acute emergency care and other things. Opinion is divided amongst the homeopathic doctors too. There are some who feel that since students of MBBS and homeopathy both study anatomy and physiology of the human body, they are competent enough to handle abortions. Maybe with a little government support and training, they can provide the services to the large number of women who many times go unattended because of the shortage of doctors. In remote areas where homeopaths are sitting, they can induce. Population is on the boom. Population is on the boom. And we have to control it somehow or the other. And sometimes it's necessary. And best thing is, sometimes it's too necessary to do it. And without side effects, without any ill effect on the body, you are getting the results. The role of the mid-level health workers is increasing manifold in the healthcare system. Both in the developing countries due to a crisis in the human resources in the health systems and also in the developed nations to reduce the cost of health care when procedures allow for a lower card of provider than physicians. Countries like US, Europe, Vietnam and South Africa have allowed the mid-level workers to carry out abortions. At the Ayurveda colleges, students and faculty have welcomed the move. They are enthusiastic about conducting surgeries, but say that government needs to plan an institutionalized training for Ayurveda students, which has never happened in the past. Ayurveda doctor can safely perform the MTP as we are getting as we are getting the training during our PG course of these techniques. Even though if uh, anyone needs the training, like uh, if a uh, newer technique are arising. Uh, day by day, the uh, government should also provide the training to the IUS doctors as uh, by this training we can provide our services even we are extend our services to the 
poor patient residing in the rural area as uh, i used doctor are working uh, in the nrhm projects and uh, rural area so poor patient definitely will get the benefit of uh, this uh, mdp But experts feel that before making any amendment there is a basic need to integrate the alternate and modern system of medicines in India. In fact during the UPA government tenure an official report initiated by former health and family welfare secretary Shailaja Chandra had asked the government to formulate standard responses and guidelines for critical areas where a combination of therapies can be used for treating patients. It had even asked the government to extend the Drug and Cosmetics Act 1940 to practitioners of alternate systems of medicine to enable them to prescribe modern medicines and deal with emergency situations. The recommendations also included strengthening postgraduate education both quantitatively and qualitatively and encouraging rigorous and independent research the quality of which needs to be judged by publications in reputed journals something that continues to be ignored. A joint Indian Council of Medical Research Ayush decision making body with representation of all research councils should be constituted for promoting the interdisciplinary research but as of now all of this is in the realm of speculation Surgery was brought about in this world by Sushruta the uh, see father of surgery whole world accepts it as a truth he belonged to Ayurveda So Ayurveda people can also do it, isn't it? Surgery is nobody's monopoly. It is. It belongs to uh, allopathy. It belongs to homeopathy. It belongs to Ayurveda. In the same way, in all ways, it is same. It's almost like an open secret in India that contractual Ayush doctors practice alternate and modern system of medicines both. recognizing the ground realities where ayush doctors recruited under national rural health mission have quite often been functioning as a sole in charge of primary health centers particularly in remote areas the emphasis now in the new mtp amendment bill 2014 perhaps will be on equipping them properly if they are expected to provide primary level acute and emergency care there's no in principle opposition to ayurvedic doctors doing it or homeopathic doctors doing it but it has to be very strictly regulated otherwise what is going to happen because women are desperate to get abortions and a large part of abortions go underground they go to some dirty clinic somewhere they get abortion and many women die a very large number of women in india tens and thousands are dying every year on account of uh, infections due to abortions being done so that's a real danger ayush now is a separate ministry in the modi government has welcomed the move but is tightly because of the precautionary approach of the health ministry as of now in the wake of the loud protests from the allopath doctors The government is still in the process of studying the feasibility of this bill as far as the infrastructure and training of Ayush midwives and auxiliary nurses is concerned. It's very clear that currently the government is weighing its options as far as the MTP amendment bill 2014 is concerned and that's precisely the reason why health ministry does not want to issue any clarification on camera. In fact the sources tell us that health ministry has issued a directive to all the BJP spokespersons not to interact with any of the journalists on this issue. Suggestions invited by the health ministry on its website have not been very encouraging. The very first look of it shows that the bill has opened a Pandora's box. Experts say that the draft does not mention anything as to how the non-allopaths will handle the complications which could arise while the patients undergo the procedure. Giving them to do the operations immediately is very dangerous. It is better they should be provided training and training in a very vigorous way. Uh, just for 1 2 years they should be trained and they should be certified to do that. otherwise if we will uh, we will allow them by a bill it will be very disaster indian medical association is vehemently against nurses and midwives conducting abortions they are not in favor of various pathies doing the same but say that if the government insists that the training period of the ayush doctors should be increased from 18 days to 36 days before they carry out the mtp Another condition which I may have put is the fact that Ayush doctors can conduct abortion only till 12 weeks at the same time not being allowed to conduct surgeries. 
Also in India, nurses are not allowed to prescribe drugs. Medical abortion drugs are not over-the-counter drugs, so cannot be prescribed by the non-allopathic healthcare providers. I have a lot of respect for Ayurveda. And if, if really, if Ayurveda wants to promote, they can take care of 50% of our diseases. All prevention is here in Ayurveda. The Chiddu should concentrate on them. If a person follows an Ayurvedic lifestyle, he will never get a heart attack. Why are they indulging into the 2 or 3% of sick population? Let them concentrate on 98% of healthy population to whom they can really come back and prevent and prevent diseases. Their job is prevention. If they come into surgery and if there are complications, where the people will go. Despite a strong resistance put by the allopath doctors, the nursing community is buoyed up on the MTP Amendment Bill 2014 as they feel they would be legally entitled to conduct abortions. Many of them do admit that in remote areas they are often conducting abortions but without a legal cover and in absolute fear of losing their jobs. But once this bill gets formalized, it will widen the ambit of their operational area. Once this amendment is done, definitely the Indian Nursing Council is going to incorporate in the uh, basic uh, syllabus of these auxiliary nurse midwives and uh, the nursing personnel so that uh, they are properly, uh, the, the, these inputs, these protocols are properly integrated in the basic curriculum so that they will be given additional hands-on training so that they can effectively perform this MTP in the rural area. With recent advances like MVA, manual vacuum aspiration, which is not that kind of surgical procedure where you have to operate it, you have to cut or invasive kind of thing, it's not that. Even, uh, even nurses with the training can perform, Ayush doctors with training can do it. And we have instances, uh, DCGI has approved a, drug, a list of drugs, life-saving drugs. Allopaths also feel that allowing the non-allopaths to conduct abortions is an encroachment upon their area of functioning. As allopaths are exclusively trained in MTP, which includes procedures like administering medicines, vacuum aspiration and surgical procedures like dilation and curatage. This is 1971 thinking when the only technology that was available was what was called dilation and curatage, which needed anesthesia. Today, there are technologies, safe technologies like what is called the manual vacuum aspiration and more importantly, medical abortion, which is using just drugs, which do not require uh, any anesthesia. They do not require the patient staying overnight. It's an outpatient treatment. So there is no need for a very specialized training. Though MTP is a normal procedure that involves medicines to induce abortion, it sometimes also requires minor surgical intervention for incomplete abortion and in cases of infections due to remaining tissue in the uterus. It is believed that the practitioners of alternative form of medicines that is Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha or Homeopathy are not competent enough to perform these procedures both by their academic training and by the laws that govern their area of functioning. This amendment has brought the spotlight back on the disparity between the modern medicine and the alternate system of medicines. Doctors say that the criteria of admission in MBBS and also opening the MBBS colleges should be made as easy as the Ayush course. They have even demanded practice standards for all courses. But all this is something on which the government again has no answers. Central Council of Indian Medicine is a regulatory body that frames syllabi and recommends affiliation to colleges teaching Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha and Homeopathy. In the past, CCIM has allowed the Indian practitioners to prescribe allopathic medicines and this relaxation has been extended to the rural areas in situations of emergencies. As far as the MTP Amendment Bill is concerned, CCIM is adopting a wait and watch policy as to what the central government decides. I'm right now at a government district hospital where I have with me a few lady health visitors along with the staff nurses and let's ask them for their opinion. What's your name? Myself, Deepa Kurana. Okay, you are a lady health visitor, hai, right? Yes. Okay, so this is the whole government's decision that nurses, midwives and non-allopaths should be given permission to MTP. Where is your job? Where is your job profile? Hai? How far are you uh, convinced of what the government is saying? Um, um, iske liye, uh, we can't say that we can do it alone, but uh, we want uh, help and training for this um, as the government wants to do. 
एक जो एम बी बी एस डॉक्टर है वो पाँच साल साढ़े छः साल पूरी ट्रेनिंग के साथ लगा कर देन ही इज़ कॉम्पिटेंट इनफ टू डू एन ऑपरेशन आप लोगों की जो मेडिकल जो एलिजिबिलिटी है जो एजुकेशनल एलिजिबिलिटी है डू यू थिंक दैट्स फेयर इनफ फॉर अ नर्स और अ मिडवाइफ टू कंडक्ट द सेम ऑपरेशन विच एन एम बी बी एस डॉक्टर इज डूइंग वी आर नीड फॉर एम टी पी डूइंग फॉर टू ईयर्स ट्रेनिंग मिनिमम टू ईयर्स ट्रेनिंग मिनिमम टू ईयर्स ट्रेनिंग लेकिन आप लोगों की जो एजुकेशन क्वालिफिकेशन आप किस बेसिस पे आते हो जनरल जो है एजुकेशन वो तो टेन प्लस टू मांगते हैं पर उसके साथ साथ कई लोग ऐसे हैं जिन्होंने बी ए भी की होती है और मतलब आर्ट्स बैकग्राउंड से भी है कुछ नर्सिस वो तो डिपेंड करता है क्योंकि पहले जो है आर्ट्स नॉन मेड सब जाते थे आजकल जो है साइंस का पैटर्न है रियल रिफ्रेन विच इज कमिंग आउट फ्रॉम हियर इज दैट दे नीड प्रैक्टिस द ट्रेनिंग पीरियड हैज टू बी डिफाइंड एंड दैट इज समथिंग विच दिस एक्ट हैज नॉट स्पेसिफाइड Another question of immediate concern is as to which council will register the case if there is any negligence or deficiency of service which means all councils will need amendments also if anesthesia is given by an allopath and abortion done by an ayurveda doctor which council regulates such a situation and also how does the drug controller act allow homeopaths and ayurveda doctors to prescribe medical abortion Proposal of permitting the non-MBBS doctors and paramedical staff to conduct MTPs is also against the provisions of the Clinical Establishment Act, which does not recognize even paramedical personnel trained by the doctors for conducting medical procedures. Indian Medical Association has written a letter to the Prime Minister and the Health Ministry to withdraw the proposed amendments in the MTP bill. After which there has been no second meeting with the IMA, which is a clear indication of the fact that the government is still mulling over the decision to clear the amendments. But even if it does, it will have to dovetail a number of points raised by the strong allopathic community. This is a scene in a rural background coming out of an Bollywood film where a midwife conducted deliveries or abortions. But safety of the women reproductive health was not a paramount factor in those times except for the faith which the villagers placed in the midwife. Even in the modern day world women in the villages are still struggling during deliveries and abortions. But with this amendment bill number of health care providers is definitely bound to increase. But the flip side is that a number of deaths do happen at the hands of qualified doctors every year. So how will the government ensure the safety of abortions? Is a mere training going to help the cause? with the government still undecided the jury is still out on this revolutionary amendment abortion is a sensitive issue and in india since 1971 it's been legalized and all the amendments so far have been accompanied by a thorough pre-legislative consultation process and this is precisely the reason why the government is taking time gauging the sentiments of the pro and the anti lobbies but if at all change needs to begin in the healthcare provider systems the government cannot afford to annoy any of its stakeholders that's all we could pack up in this half hour from our entire team goodbye and thanks for watching